Right. Lastly, Martin Lewis gave some invaluable advice on how you can manage your credit score and make it more attractive to lenders. Well, he offered to come back this week and answer some questions that you might have emailed or tweeted, and you certainly didn't disappoint us. Um, let's just a couple of things before we get into mm. those. Um, you say universal credit ratings and blacklists don't exist. No. Every time, when you apply for new credit, the credit, uh, the, the lender will score you based on its wish list of what is a profitable customer. And each lender is different. You know, it could be as much as you're applying for a credit card and it's really trying to flog you a mortgage. So when it credit scores you, it's credit scoring you on how good and likely you are to get a mortgage with it, not whether it really wants to give you a credit card. So the whole thing, there is no universality here. So when you, get a, when you apply to one and you get rejected, lots of people think, oh, I've got a blacklist, I'm blacklisted. No, yes. no. That lender didn't want you. You didn't fit its, its priorities. But when you when you sign up to one of these credit record things mm -hmm. and you can go on go online and check mm -hmm. your score and you go on there and if you've got a low score, surely that sort of counts as something like a blacklist. It counts as absolutely nothing. Really? It counts as, look, you go on and you collect check what that is, is that's that quite the, expensive some of them though. They right? are, and which is why I would suggest you'd you know, look. Go and check your files. It's important to see what information is held on your file. What that credit score does is it's indicative of whether you tend to be a good credit score or you tend not to be. But there are three things they look at when you apply for credit. They look at your credit reference file information, which is what that score is made up from. They look at your application form details, crucially important. You know, even your job title, if you change it too often, you can be knocked out for fraud scoring. Well, that isn't in your credit score that you get on those websites. And they look at any past dealings that institution, if it's your bank, for example, has had with you. Well, that isn't on your credit score. So, loosely indicative, if you're getting one free as part of a free trial, fine. But don't but, um, necessarily. You no, know, I mean, it's a good way to look at whether you're generally likely in the rush of things the, to get credit. The best way I always explain this is what we're trying to do is make you more attractive, and it's a bit like going on the pull. Now, when you go on the pull, there's things that you can do that will make you more attractive to many people, but not everyone is going to fancy you. Some people prefer you with makeup, some people prefer you without, and that's just you, Philip. Uh, uh, you know, and that's the way it tends to work. So, it's the it, what I'm truly trying to make the point is there's no universality here. There's no, you're a great credit scorer, you're a bad. It's more like, you're what I'm looking for, you're not what I'm looking for. Well, let's, yeah. let's jump into the emails then in that okay. case. We've got one from Lindsay. Lindsay said, my partner has bad credit due to uh, taking out loans when in a previous job with a higher income. He lost his job and his loans went uh, into blacklisting. So how can he improve his credit rating? We want to get a house together in the near future. Well, look, let's be straight here. We can't work magic. And what they're trying to do in credit scoring is predict your future behaviour based on your past. You haven't repaid loans, so I'm afraid you're not looking particularly good. Uh, though it's going to take six years for those defaults to get off your file. Now, what you can do, there are, there are basic things. Whatever credit you have now, make sure you're repaying it on time. It's an important question as you're a couple to ask yourself, would you be able to get the mortgage by yourself? Because as long as you don't have a joint bank account or joint mortgage, which you obviously don't, then you're not credit linked, so they'll look at you separately. But if you have a joint bank account, they look at you together. Maybe you'd be best applying yourself. Yeah, that's Probably true. you haven't got the earnings that's going to push you up to that particular level. But then what you may want to do is actually get out some credit, make sure you're paying it in full so there's no interest, get out some credit, spend £50, £60 a month on a credit card, pay it off in full each month, do that for a year or so, because remember, it's about looking at your past behaviour. So currently... So you, even if maybe you didn't need it, you absolutely. would do it, make sure you pay it off and then, and then it's you're a technique. teaching them that you well, can. It, well, yeah, if you look at it, it, all they've got on you is you haven't repaid your loans. If you start getting a credit card and you're repaying it each month, then, it then it's starting to, starting to bring Slightly down... It's a longer risk. process. It's going to be a long process. Though, if, you've yeah. got a bad, if, you've had, if you've been not paying, yeah. there, there's not much worse apart from bankruptcy. OK, let's go uh, onto the phones now. We've got Roxanne on the phone. Good morning to you, Roxanne. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Now, your problem is, is that you've moved around an awful lot, haven't you? In the last three and a half years, yeah. you've moved between 20 and 30 times. Wow. Yeah, I've moved a lot in the past four years. So this is causing um, you issues now, isn't it, when, when it comes yeah. to credit? Are you yeah, I the... believe it is the, um, obviously, the amount of addresses I've had and the time spent at the addresses as well. Yeah. And so I, I, how long do you spend at each place? Well, sometimes it's only about two months, um, sometimes six months. Mm. There's been quite a few addresses. Is Over it, four years. I, I can absolutely see. I mean, fraud scoring would be brought up there and just instability. I mean, that's why I always suggest put a home phone number, not a la mobile, if you've got one on your application form, because it can make a difference. Right. So, let me ask you a question. Are you on the electoral roll? I'm not on my new flat. I've been here for about three months now, and I've got an eight-month-old baby, so I'll be staying here for a while now. So I will be settled. Congratulations. Um, as a, as a <laughs> side note, yeah, mine was a year old on Friday. It was Aww. delightful. But um, 
Make sure you get yourself on the electoral roll. Without that, you're, you're right. going to be pretty much stymied. Do you know all your past addresses? I do, but the dates are a bit... Um, it's hard to remember all the dates exactly. For, for you and everyone else, write down those dates and store them because you need to be accurate. Right. Again, inconsistency on application forms causes you a problem. Now, this one is okay. one of the big things that everybody misses, right? If you've got old credit agreements, now that could be a contract mobile phone or car and home insurance based on an old property, and even if you're not using it anymore, it's technically active and you haven't updated the address to your new address, mm. you're, you're gonna be, that's going to knock you out. So you need to go get your credit reference files at all three agencies, Equifax, Experian and Call Credit. Right, you need okay. to check what of your old products are registered at your old addresses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you need to contact those companies and give them your latest address change. The okay. final, if none of that works, yeah. the final thing I'd suggest, and this works for anyone who's got some weird, I don't mean to call you weird, but some weird circumstance <laughs> that's different. <laughs> okay. Well, moving house 30, 20, 30 times in two years is counted normal. Let's well, go provided she's not on the run. And I'm well, presumed that, not. If you, years, I'm if you are, not. you're very silly to have done a phone-in <laughs> show. Uh, <laughs> right? No, there are many people in the forces who move about a lot, and it can, can be a consistent problem. <laughs> then you have a right on the credit reference agency forms to write in what's called a notice of correction, which is right. where you put an explanation of what your counter normal, that's my new phrase, not weird, your counter normal circumstance is. What that does is when you apply, instead of going through the computerized scoring system, mm. someone has to look at it manually. It slows yeah. the process down, but it means someone, if you've got a legitimate explanation for why you're moving that often, will go, yeah. okay, this may not be a problem. Sometimes it helps, yeah. sometimes it doesn't. I'd only do well, that I'm if the other. and it, it's completely different now. Fantastic. Well, that, I mean, but don't do that until you've tried the other stuff. If the other stuff right, hasn't okay. worked, you know, remember, in three years' time, this won't be a problem if you've stayed in one yeah, place. Yeah, I know, yeah. So, so do all the things I've said, and if that hasn't worked, then write in a very formal, I'm talking three lines, I moved about a lot for this reason, I'm now in a stable place. It, it, it was a perfectly yeah. understandable reason that I moved. Yeah. And whatever okay, it is, I'm not going to ask you. For Good luck. Good luck, yes. Thank you very much. Thing. Nice to talk yeah. to you. Bye now. Um, very, very quickly, Louise has tweeted, never had a loan, credit cards, debt, will this go against us when applying for a mortgage? Yeah. If they haven't got a history on you, it's almost as bad as having a bad one because they can't predict your behaviour, it makes it more difficult. I would go and get yourself a credit card. Now, if you can't get a credit card because you've got a bad history, see the vicious circle here, there are some bad credit credit cards. Um, you've got uh, Capital One Progress, you've got Barclay Card Initial, you've got Luma, which allow people with poor credit scores to get them. Their interest rate is hideous, you know, 34.9%. But guess off. what? You pay them off. Block ears, Phil. Oh, no. In full! at the end of the month so that there is no interest and you're just doing that as a process to, to build a history. Yep. Think about this. Predict your future behaviour from your past. The less they, well they can predict that or the worse they predict, oh, the more difficult. Oh, because we've got so much time to start messing around with stuff like that. Do you know Look, what I mean? It's complicated. But you know what? Whether you're going to get a mortgage now is so much more about credit scoring than just about deposits, car insurance, contract mobile phones, credit That's cards, what I mean. loans, There's anything. So much. But you have to manage it. I you know, have to see it as a job, as management. If you're struggling like this, I'm afraid you're going to have to do the work, well, the or you're result, going to have to. The end result is is. Well, people want houses. I mean, That's happens. what this yeah. is about. Put the work people in. want I houses, yeah, and that. they're going to have to do the work. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Loads more tips on the website, by the way. Superb. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.